Arika Johnson. 1M. Shared with public. The Munsters, Monsters Under the Bed. Scene 1, A Strange Noise. It's a typical dark, stormy evening at 1313, Mockingbird Lane. The Munster family is gathered in the living room. Herman is reading a newspaper, Lily is knitting a scarf, Grandpa is working on a potion, and Eddie is doing his homework at the kitchen table. The silence is broken by a sudden thump from upstairs, followed by a scraping noise. Eddie, nervously, did you guys hear that? Herman, grinning, oh, Eddie, you know the house makes noises. Probably just your Uncle Gilbert up in the attic again. Lily, calmly, or a bat stuck in the rafters. Eddie's face stays tense. Eddie, whispering, it came from under my bed. Lily and Herman exchange amused glances. Grandpa, in the background, rolls his eyes. Grandpa, sarcastically, ooh, under the bed, that's where the really scary stuff hides. Scene 2, Bedtime for Eddie. Eddie heads upstairs reluctantly, hugging his wolfman doll tight. Herman and Lily tuck him in, but Eddie is still on edge. Eddie, but Dad, I swear something's been moving under there. Herman leans down, his huge frame looming over the bed as he checks underneath. It's empty except for dust and a couple of old toys. Herman, playfully, nope, nothing here but the remains of your last science project. Lily, soothing, good night, dear, no more imagining things, all right? They kiss him good night and head back downstairs. As soon as the lights go out, the strange noise returns a low, guttural growl from beneath the bed. Eddie's eyes widen in fear. Scene 3, Eddie's Midnight Visitor. Eddie can't take it anymore. He dives out of bed and sprints down to the living room, eyes wide. Eddie, shouting, there's a monster under my bed. Grandpa chuckles, sipping on his latest potion. Grandpa, teasing, Eddie, you're a monster. Monsters are family around here. But Eddie is adamant. This gets Herman's attention. Herman, serious, all right, Eddie. If there is a monster under your bed, I'll go have a word with it. No one scares my son and gets away with it. They march upstairs, but this time, when Herman checks under the bed, a pair of glowing red eyes stares back at him. Herman leaps back, startled. Herman, okay, I may have spoken too soon. Scene 4, Grandpa's Plan. The family gathers in Eddie's room, trying to figure out what to do. Grandpa has an idea, always ready with his potions and schemes. Grandpa, I've got just the thing, a little potion that can make any unwanted visitor disappear. He rushes down to his lab while Herman and Lily try to comfort Eddie. Lily, don't worry, sweetie. Grandpa's potions always do the trick. Eddie, are you sure? Last time, his potion made Spot breathe out pink bubbles for a week. Scene 5, face to face with the creature. Grandpa returns with a bubbling concoction, its fumes swirling ominously. Grandpa, smiling wickedly, one splash of this, and that monster will be gone in a puff. Herman prepares to pour the potion under the bed, but before he can, the creature crawls out revealing itself to be an adorable but mischievous gremlin, covered in fur with oversized teeth and claws. Despite its small size, it lets out a menacing growl. Gremlin, snarling, I don't like being disturbed. Eddie hides behind Herman, but Herman steps forward. Herman, sternly, listen, buddy, no one terrifies my family except for me, of course. Scene 6, A New Pet? The gremlin suddenly stops growling and tilts its head curiously. Gremlin, innocent, I didn't mean to scare anyone. I was just looking for a new home. Grandpa lowers his potion, intrigued. Grandpa, a gremlin, huh? You're not half bad, little guy. A bit of a troublemaker, but we've got plenty of room here at the Munster Mansion. Lily, we could use another family pet. Eddie brightens up at the idea. Eddie, can we keep him? Scene 7, The Gremlin's Revenge. The gremlin moves in, but it quickly becomes clear that having him around isn't so easy. He causes chaos wherever he goes, tripping Lily while she's carrying a stack of dishes, tangling Herman's hair in knots while he's sleeping, and playing pranks on Grandpa during his experiments. 
The final straw comes when the gremlin nearly floods the house, tampering with the plumbing in the basement. Lily, exasperated, that's it. This house is chaotic enough without a gremlin stirring things up. Scene 8, The Gremlin's True Nature. Just as they're about to send the gremlin packing, he transforms, his fur falls off, and he turns into a small, devilish figure with a crooked grin. Gremlin, mocking, did you really think you could keep me? I'm a gremlin, born to create mischief. He leaps onto the chandelier, swinging around the room as chaos ensues. The Munsters scramble to catch him. Scene 9, Grandpa's Trap. Grandpa finally has enough and concocts a new plan. He brews up a special trap in his lab, setting it up just as the gremlin prepares to unleash his biggest prank yet. Grandpa, grinning, come on, you little troublemaker. Let's see how you like a taste of your own medicine. The gremlin is caught in the trap, a net that's enchanted to hold even the most slippery of creatures. Gremlin, shouting, let me out of here. Grandpa, sorry, buddy, but it's time for you to go. You're more trouble than you're worth. Scene 10. Goodbye Gremlin. The family gathers in the backyard to say goodbye. Herman, still towering and imposing, gives the gremlin a stern look. Herman, next time, try living with a family that doesn't mind a little chaos, but not here. Grandpa opens a portal, sending the gremlin back to his home dimension. Eddie, sadly, do we really have to send him away? Lily, smiling, don't worry, Eddie. We've got plenty of excitement right here. As the portal closes, the family gathers together, relieved that things are finally back to normal at least for now. The end. Like. Comment. Share.